So we've initialized our database with Prisma, and now it's time to initialize our GraphQL server. So to do that, we are going to go into Pages API GraphQL. And our GraphQL server is Apollo server. And what we're going to do is after just importing, why don't we import everything actually? Because I think we're going to use everything right now. Although we're going to get some errors until we go and resolve those. So this page right here receives every single GraphQL request. GraphQL uses a single endpoint and then Apollo server basically receives that request and then passes the work off to resolvers, which we'll get to in a second. So we're going to start by declaring our GraphQL server. So that would be const server is equal to new Apollo server. And we have to pass some options into the Apollo server so it knows what to do. And the first thing it needs is a schema. So our schema will be coming from SRC schema. And schema basically just declares, it again, like a database, it declares the structure, but this time of your GraphQL API. So what are all of the queries you can perform? What are all the mutations? And each type of data it has, what are the fields that that object has? So a house, for example, has an image, has bedrooms, has an ID, etc. So we're going to get to declaring this schema in a second, but we're also going to declare something called a context. And context is basically uh, a chunk of data that gets passed to every single query, every field. It's available sort of globally within your GraphQL API. And here's where we can put stuff like, who's the user? What's their user ID? Are they authenticated? What's the connection to our database so that we can query data? So this will be an async function that's going to receive the request. And the request will be um, type of API request. So I just sort of declared this interface inline. If you wanted to declare an interface above, you could do that, but that's what we're going to do here. And what does this, um, what does this context function return? So that's, it's returning basically the chunk of data that's available globally. Well, it's going to return a promise because we've declared it as an asynchronous function. And when this promise resolves, it's going to give us something called uh, a type called the context. So we are going to declare the type for our context. It doesn't exist yet. So we're going to get to that in a second. Let's fill out the body of this function, what it's going to return, and then we'll go satisfy the type for that. So the first thing we need is the user ID. Um, we want to know who's logged in to make sure that they have access to do the thing that they're trying to do. So we're going to await for load ID token and we have to give it the request. So this is one we built previously and we used in a number of pages, for example, off um, in the get server side props to, to check to see if the user is authenticated already or not. So we're going to be reusing that functionality. And then we're just going to return an object that contains both the user ID and also Prisma, our Prisma client that we created in the previous video. So it would be this guy here. So now in our context, we know who the user is and we can query our database. So our goal is to get rid of these red squiggles. So let's first go and declare the interface for our context. It's basically just telling it what type of data to be expected returned from this function. So this is an SRC schema context, we are going to import this Prisma client type so that we can uh, type that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to export an interface called context. And the two properties it's going to have are the user ID, which is either going to be a string if they're authenticated, null if they're not, and Prisma, which is a Prisma client. So pretty simple. Those are the two pieces of data. We're going to create a variation of this um, context interface, which is for an auth authorized user. So when we expect the user to be authorized. So we're going to say export interface authorized context. And we're going to just extend this one here. And we're going to tweak one of the properties. So when you're authorized, there's always going to be a UID. We're not going to have the possibility of it being null. So if we go back here, 
Um, this should be okay now. Uh, we got rid of the red squiggles here and we can continue on. So we've created a server, but we haven't really done anything with it yet. So what we're going to do is create what's called a handler. And the handler is basically telling the server to listen to requests to a certain endpoint. So we say server.createHandler, and we have to tell it what path it's running on. So this is slash API slash GraphQL. So we'll just say that, slash API slash GraphQL, just like that. So now we want to export two things from this file. We obviously want to export our handler. This is what's going to receive the incoming requests and process them. But, and I'm just going to do it here between, we also need to export one additional config. Um, and I'll explain what it does in a second. So we're going to export const config and it's going to have API body parser false. What did I do? Equals. There we go. So by default, um, Next.js wants to parse the body of the incoming requests, but that sort of messes with Apollo server, which also wants to do the same thing. So we're just telling it like, yo man, back off, we got this, leave it alone. So with this in place, we can receive GraphQL requests, but we haven't created our schema yet. So Apollo server won't know how to resolve those requests, how to handle them. So we're gonna hop over to the SRC schema file and create sort of our initial schema. It won't be full-fledged yet with all the queries and mutations, but we're just gonna get sort of the minimal version up and running. So that would be into SRC schema, and we're talking about the index file here. So we're gonna just import this build schema sync for now, and also the auth checker. We're gonna build a function that will check if our user is authenticated or not. So to do this, we are going to export our schema. And we do that by calling build schema sync. And to this, we have to pass a few things. Um, you can see it's, it's red right now. It's, it's wanting resolvers. So resolvers are where you declare what are all the queries, what are all the mutations, how do you actually resolve them, how do you handle those requests and process them. It's an array of them, and we're going to create one in a second. It also wants to emit a schema file. Now this isn't mandatory, but we actually do want it to generate a schema file because we are going to, on the front end, generate types from the schema file so that all of our GraphQL queries are typed correctly. But we only want to do this in development mode. So we can just say where the process.env.nodeenv is equal to uh, development. The last thing we're going to declare is the auth checker, which uh, doesn't exist yet, we were, we'll go and create that in a second. It's a very small function. Okay, so we need some resolvers. We don't have any. It won't let you build a schema without any. So even though um, this is going to be one we're going to delete later, we're going to create one called the dummy resolver. Now, um, we're using type GraphQL. And the way type GraphQL works is it uses something called a decorator. So decorators are functions that look sort of funky. They have an at symbol and they go sort of before a class or before a function and they sort of wrap themselves around that thing to add additional functionality to the thing it's wrapping itself around. So for this, we need to import two additional things. Uh, we need to import a resolver and a query from type GraphQL. So add in these two uh, things that we're importing and then we're going to create a class called dummy resolver. For now, you can leave it empty. But what we're going to do is wrap the resolver around the class. So we're saying this class is going to act as a resolver. And in here, we're going to create one query. You always have to have at least a query to your GraphQL, um, to your GraphQL API, otherwise it doesn't work. So we're going to create one. And to query um, decorator, we pass an arrow function that has returns that we're not going to use a string. So we're saying this query is going to return a string. Just like that. 
So what query are we gonna have? We're just going to have one called hello because it's a dummy one and it's going to return nice to meet you, just like that. So now that we've got our dummy resolver, we can just copy this class name and put it into the array of resolvers. So now our GraphQL schema would be good, except that we just have to go and add our auth checker. So this goes inside of auth, and this is something that Type GraphQL uses to verify whether the user has access to a certain query or a certain mutation or a certain field. So we're gonna import these two things, um, auth checker from Type GraphQL in the context that we had just created. And we're gonna export just a small function that will do the job of auth checking. So we're gonna say export const auth checker. Its return type is auth checker. And we need to pass it something additional to this auth checker um, context. Basically, what is the type of data that's going to be passed to this um, function? So this is an arrow function that's going to receive the context like that. And it knows what it has. Um, it has UID and it has Prisma based on us telling it right here. And the goal of this function is to return a Boolean. It wants to know true or false, does the user have access um, to, this, to, this, um, to this query or this mutation? So what we're going to do is we're going to say, um, we're gonna get the UID from the context and we're just going to return, basically convert this either string or null into a Boolean. So we're gonna say bang bang UID. And that will sort of convert the string to the Boolean. So with this in place, we come back, everything's looking good for our GraphQL schema. So now it's time to just go and take this thing for a spin. Ensure that your Next.js app is running. And then what you can do, and we'll just do this in a new tab and we'll keep this open. We're gonna visit API slash GraphQL. So Apollo Server comes with this fantastic um, GraphQL playground that lets you um, interact with your GraphQL API through this interface. So what we can do here is we can pop open the right and it has documentation. So it tells us um, what our GraphQL database or GraphQL data, GraphQL API and what its schema looks like. So we have a query called hello, it returns us a string. We also have docs if we want. So just this one query, what it returns. So we can go and execute our query, run this, and over here we get our data back on the right. Um, one cool thing that I'll mention, although we're not gonna really touch on too much, is Apollo Server supports this thing called tracing. Basically, it gives you timing info about every query, every field, so if you have performance issues, you can find them. To turn that on, you just need to go back to where you declared your Apollo Server, go below the context and tracing. So we could turn tracing on in um, development environment maybe. So by that in place, we could basically come back, rerun the same query, and we can see that our request took 204 milliseconds, but it only took 92 nanoseconds to generate the hello field of a query. I assume it was slow because it was the first time so now that the server's booted, six seconds to process the request, 47 nanoseconds to generate the hello field, and 17 milliseconds to generate the entire response back from the server. So this whole thing is resolving in about 17 milliseconds total. It might be 17 plus six, so whatever that is, 23 milliseconds. So that's what I wanted to cover in this video. Oh, one more thing. So remember when we declared our type GraphQL schema and we told it to emit a schema file? So what this does is it generates a new file in the root of our uh, project called schema.gql, which is generated by type GraphQL and it just contains your GraphQL schema. This is very important. We always want an up-to-date schema. So anytime you modify your, your GraphQL schema, just come in here, 
refresh doing that will sort of run it through the schema and that will generate this new schema file. It's up to date. That's important because we're going to be doing um, type TypeScript code gen based on our GraphQL API and it uses this to help generate the types. So what we did in this video is we actually edited quite a few files. We built our Apollo server. We built our GraphQL schema. And for that, we defined the types for our um, context that's passed to every query, every field inside of our GraphQL resolvers. And we also built our auth checker, which simply looks to see if the user has authenticated or not. So we can say, for example, you can't create a house unless you are authenticated, things like that. And then the other file was the auto-generated schema.gql. Okay, that's it for this video. Now we're gonna hop back in the next one to the front end where we're going to initialize our Apollo client that lives inside of React. See you then, bye.